All right, hello everybody. Today we are going to talk about how to build your own REST endpoint within Salesforce. Now REST endpoints can be really useful for extracting data or inputting data from third-party systems and give you a really clean way to interact with your Salesforce org from other systems. Now, I like to think of REST endpoints as sort of like the plug that you have in the wall. Um, when you build a REST endpoint, what you do is you're assembling a plug and then any system that has that plug type can just plug right in and input or extract data. So it really provides kind of a standardized way for you to communicate from and into your Salesforce org. So this is a little bit more technical. We're gonna be writing some Apex code, um, but overall it's really simple. I'm not gonna go into authorization or other more complex topics. I just wanna show you what some of the different methods are that we'll build and uh, the different REST methods they'll correspond to, and we'll go from there. So without any further ado, let's get started. All right, so first things first, let's go ahead and log into Salesforce. Now, once we're in, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to create a custom object that's going to receive the data that I'm going to pass to this REST endpoint. Now, I'm going to create three custom fields on this custom object, and I'm fast forwarding through this part because by now, if you're going to be taking on something like building an Apex REST class, you probably know already how to make a custom object. Now, my three fields are going to be contact, so this object will look up to contact. Uh, and I'm going to include the system name, which is a text, and the session length, which is a number. So in essence, this is a scenario where, let's say we have a third-party system, and we want to know if one of our contacts in Salesforce is logging into it. So within that system, we might make a REST call to Salesforce and push some data into Salesforce every time a user logs in. So that's what we're going to simulate here. And I'm going through and creating this object. So just now we've finished, and what we'll do is we'll go ahead and create a tab so that we can just go ahead and see the records of that object that we've created. We'll make that tab visible just to administrators. And now if I click that little plus button, I can go and see my tab and I'll just create one sample record uh, with just myself as the contact and give it a sample length and there it is. All right, so now we need to actually write some Apex. So I'm gonna open up my developer console. And I'll go ahead and create a new Apex class, and I'm going to call it REST uh, User Login. And now what I need to do is I need to actually tell the system which REST endpoint this is at. So I'm going to put it at slash user login, and I'm going to change it to a global class. Now I'm going to put in the four HTTP methods that are corresponding to REST. And I'm just going to put in some placeholder functions. I'm just going to make them global static voids for now, and then we'll go ahead and change them accordingly. All right, so I've put in those four. Now let's make the git. And the git is actually gonna return a list of the objects. So I'm gonna have it return a list of those that custom object. Now I can see I've actually made an error here. Um, it's, it's external login rather than user login. So I'll go ahead and fix that. That's the name of the object. And what I need to do is I need to query those external logins and then I need to return whatever that query gives back to me. So I'll go ahead and write my query, and I'll name the list external logins, and then I'll just paste in a query that I have, and I'm going to return that list. Now again, I've made the error of calling it user login rather than external login. That's my bad. I'll go ahead and fix that really quickly. And once we're done with that, we save, and that's all for that method. That should return us a list. So let's move on to the next one, which is actually creating a record via HTTP POST. And when we post data to this REST endpoint, we're actually going to need to post three different items. One is going to be the email that's going to correspond to the contact in the Salesforce system. One is going to be the length of the session. And the last is actually going to be the name of the system that they're logging into. So these three things that we're passing correspond to the three fields we created on our custom object. And so now they'll be called system name, user email, and session length. Now I'm gonna create an empty contact and I'm gonna make a try catch block. So this is going to execute and it's going to try and execute and if there's some error, it's gonna catch that and return it. So what I'm going to try to do is I'm gonna try and query for a contact who has a matching email. So I'm gonna say select ID and email from contact where email is equal to with a little colon because we're comparing to a variable user email, which is obviously the variable that's being passed. 
Now I'm just gonna get zero, which means get the first record that's returned because sometimes it can return a list and we just want one object within that list. Now I'm gonna create a new external login object. I'm gonna just call it new login. There we go. And within that new login, that new object, I'm just going to set the field values of the system name, the user email, and the session length. Now I have to remember to use the actual field names within Salesforce and then match them to what I'm passing in the parameters of this function. So system corresponds to system name, contact corresponds to um, actually the contact that I queried, the ID of that contact is what you need to pass it. And session length should correspond to session length. So now that we've gone ahead and done that, all we would need to do with this new object we've created is go ahead and insert it into the system. So I'll go ahead and write that line of code, which is just insert new login. Now, if anything fails along the way, it's going to jump into this block, the catch block. And E is actually going to, that exception that we put in the parameter, is actually going to contain the error message. So I want to pass that error message to my REST response. So this is what the server is going to respond with. And I'm going to have to use a blob, which is just an, a difficult to explain type of object that can hold many different things. And I'm just going to say, there's been an error, and then I'm going to get the message that the system has returned. So that's what's going to happen if it fails. If it, if it goes properly, I'm also going to return a message. I'm going to say success. And then what I want to do is I want to actually give the user the ID of the object that was created. So I'm going to say record created with ID, and then I'm going to pass the ID of that new login object. So regardless of whether or not it goes well or poorly, they'll get something back. Now let's do our delete function. Now in order to delete something, we're going to have to pass an ID. And again, we're going to do a try catch block. And this time we're going, to, we're going to pass it as a parameter of the URL, because this is what you must do within an HTTP delete function. It's just a requirement. And what we're going to try and do here is we're going to try and query again for the object that corresponds to that ID that we're passing. So I'll create another query here. I'm going to call it login to delete. And I'll just go ahead and select an ID from that object, external login, that matches the ID that's being passed through my URL parameter. Now, I've made a little mistake here. Obviously, I need to go and rename the variable on line 31 so that it has a unique name. So I'm actually going to name it param ID. And I'm going to go ahead and just fix that line up there so that they correspond. There we go. Now, all I have to do is go ahead and try and delete that. And again, I'm going to go ahead and just copy the error messages, more or less, that I have above. Uh, I want to put something in my response body to always tell the user or the system that's hitting this REST endpoint whether or not they hit it successfully, whether or not what they were trying to do worked. So this time, of course, I'll say if it's success, it'll just be the, that the record's been deleted. And that's the only message that I need to pass to the user. All right, there we have it. And then last but not least, I'm actually going to comment the HTTP put. HTTP put. So I'm going to leave this empty, or I'm just, I could remove it altogether. It's not useful in this context. You would use put to update a record. Uh, since I'm just storing login information, I'm not going to need to update those. All right, so now let's zoom out and let's open up Workbench. We've seen Workbench in a couple other videos. This is a really useful tool. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and log in with Salesforce because I now want to test that REST endpoint that I've created. And I'm going to go on over to my Utilities tab and to the REST Explorer. And I'll type in services slash Apex REST, and then that endpoint I created, which was user login. Now, if I click Execute, it's automatically going to do the git, because you can see that git1 is selected. And I can see the list of objects that are returned. Now, let's try a post. So with a post, again, I'm going to have to post those three pieces of data that are corresponding, right? So that would be like the system name, the user email, and the length of the session, so that I can create an object within the Salesforce system. That's what post does. So I'm going to copy those variable names. I'm going to copy system name. I'm going to put it in there. I'm going to go back. I'm going to copy user email, put it in there. And I'm going to get session length and put it back in there. Now remember, these have to match uh, exactly 
as to what the parameters are in the function. So you can name them or rename them what, what you like, but make sure you're using the same ones. So let's do a sample record. We'll call it Zendesk. And again, we'll use my email because that's the email of the contact in my system. And I'll just put a sample session length and I'll go ahead and execute this. Now, once I've executed, I'll get my success message back because it looks like it worked. And I'll grab that ID and I'll go and paste it in. And now I can see the object that's been created with those three fields. Now let's go and delete that same ID. We'll go to delete and we'll put it in as our ID parameter and boom, record has been deleted successfully. So now if we go back to that record and then we go to the list view, we can actually see there's still only one record now because that was the record I created by myself um, within the system without the rest endpoint. All right, so there we go. We tested our rest endpoints. Um, we tested our three different methods that we made. One was a git, which got us a list of results. One was a post, which created a new record, and one was delete, which deleted a record. So it looks like all three of those are functioning, and our REST endpoint has been successfully created. All right, so there we go. That was pretty easy. We built our own REST endpoint, and then we used Workbench to essentially test to make sure that it was working properly. Now, hopefully you can utilize this uh, within your own orgs, and remember that you can actually expose a REST endpoint, or the corresponding Apex class, within a public force.com site. So essentially you can make it open without authorization um, to other systems. Now, whether or not this is something you want to do is of course dependent on your situation, but I wanted to bring that up since in a previous video we showed you how you can build a force.com site. So this is an example of one piece of functionality which can be used uh, in a force.com site. So anyways, that's all for today. I want to thank you guys for watching. If this was useful to you, consider subscribing or liking the video and uh, we'll be back soon with another. Thanks.